different perspective of on course. this. Uh, I'm not too sure when you say financial inclusion, what exactly uh, the definition of yeah. it, because if you so like you access at, to different ways, uh, yeah, right. so if you look at access to credit, if you look at the doing business, World Bank, I know it's discontinued now. Last when I looked at it, we ranked about 132 or 34 yeah. out of 190 countries. Mm. And India is 25, for instance. Uh, Cambodia, which ranks about 140 or 44 in doing business, they rank 25 in access to credit. Mm. And, and, and Sri Lankan companies are leading in, in, in uh, you know, uh, yeah, players in the Cambodian market. Right. Yeah. And, and even in, uh, if you compare Pakistan and Bangladesh, still they rank higher in terms of access to credit, right? So the, the question is, my personal opinion is that, especially after the end of the war, where we want to really drive economic growth, I felt the, the financial institutions didn't really support that growth. Uh, that because supporting entrepreneurship and SMEs is a must. We have about a 65-70% mm -hmm. informal sector. Uh, so again, I kind of beg to differ. We are financially uh, inclusive for these reasons. I think we were few years back. And, and, and uh, you know, if you really look at the, the, the lending side, how do you, you know, create capital formation without really giving you access to access to credit uh, and I, I feel banks can do a lot more and I agree agree with you that you need to look at beyond typical conventional uh, banking finance you know not to get just asset backed uh, lending but private equity venture capitals coming in corporate uh, coming into this then only you can broaden that you will keep much more opportunity uh, opportunity for for, for, for borrowing and businesses to, to, to grow. Yeah. No, Tulsi, I do add to what you said. Uh, Tulsi, I can remember one of the professors who left the country a long time ago when he was here somewhere in 95, as I can remember. Uh, he, he did, now he's in the US, and he did uh, some research where he, he found about 20, 30 odd IPOs coming through. So, so where we are there later on, the, why, why those channels kind of dried off? Uh, there again, uh, international experience always shows that uh, the other contemporary, other other kind of avenues also should come into the market and play their yeah. role. Yeah. Also, because we are primarily we are taking deposits from so many people and lending it out, uh, then uh, we, our risk appetites are fairly different. And uh, the specifically the interest of the depositor, where a couple of millions of people are depositing with uh, the, so we have a few to to there. the HNB and Understand. commercial, we have a couple of millions of yeah. depositors. And all those are not, not kind of very, very rich and wealthy people and they don't have that particular risk appetite as well. So then we need to really develop uh, other, other markets and I think uh, the, the, the CAC and SEC, I don't know, they have been trying their level best for so many decades. So I think we can do much more here. Both are right actually because there is an informal sector, formal sector and a semi-formal sector. So we need to bring that all under the regulation and creep and so that we have data so that we can lend. But I agree we have to do a different kind of lending for these guys. We can't, uh, we can't sort of, banks can't analyze them the same way uh, that we do. Um, uh, people who have balance sheets and all that. So we are trying to do that kind of lending. So it's too stringent for this kind of category. But to support that to see, you need, you need a credit information bureau, you mm. need other data, a digital, uh, where you can identify people, mm. where you can identify their total debt, because mm. we don't know where they have borrowed, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Their debt burden. So all those things are a need and you need a sort of the regulatory environment. So, I, and he's right, you have to bring all these people together. I think they're all helping, but to ensure that customers are treated fairly, not overcharged, because we also need these other players, because for us it's a huge cost. Mm. Uh, to go to these guys, right? It's a huge cost. But community-based lending and all, it's not such a big cost. Absolutely. Right? But we need to also find digital channels, etc. So, also, like in Singapore, there are insurance schemes, uh, mm. etc. Credit insurance schemes where uh, initially the government will, there's an insurance scheme which takes 75% of the risk mm. and then the banks take 25 As the company grows, 
then we will take more risk. Uh, so all those schemes are there in a holistic manner, for instance, in a Singapore. But here it's sort of ad hoc.